we learned that administrators at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology withheld notifications of National Merit Recognition Awardees until it was too late to use that recognition to enhance admission potential to colleges and scholarship availability, and that a Thomas Jefferson official said this was done to save non-awardees from sadness, all in the name of equality of outcomes. Since then, we've discovered that six more Fairfax County high schools had the same thing happen, as well as several in Loudoun and Flint counties. Governor Youngkin has proposed a bill that if enacted would require school administrators to promptly notify students of any such recognitions they receive to our representatives. Do you support this legislation and uh, why not? And on the same subject, we also learned that our superintendent, Michelle Reed, signed a $450,000 no-bid contract with the so-called equity coach to teach equality of outcomes, which is socialism as opposed to equality of opportunity, which should be the standard. Since you all are responsible for giving us a lot of the money for our schools, I wonder what you have to say about that kind of squandering of our tax money. And I would appreciate hearing from Ms. Corbin Sanders, who's sitting right there, about this $450,000 uh, use of our tax money and perhaps whether our superintendent ought to be sanctioned or fired. What's your name, sir? My name is Jay Spiegel. Uh, thanks, Jay. So I, I have a couple of things. I'll pass it down for everybody else. So, um, just, First of all, I think Supervisor Stork would disagree with you provide a lot of money, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I think we do. Um, but uh, typically, the operation of the school system at that level is handled by the school board. Um, they're, they're charged under our system of you know, if you're spending money, we get them, we put some rules on it. But uh, there was a similar push to sort of, I think, spotlight uh, DEI spending. Uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion spending at our state universities. That legislation was heard in the Senate today last week. I don't think you got a single vote. Uh, Bryce Reeves, Senator Bryce Reeves put in the bill. We want, we want all of our state universities to, to highlight their DEI spending, and it, it didn't go anywhere. And uh, I appreciate some people disagree with that spending, and uh, uh, a lot of us feel it's important. I don't. I have a problem with the DEI consultant. I don't know about the cost or what they cost, but, um, but I, would, I would direct that to the school board. And by the way, you also have three other at large school board members too, which is Karen Corbett's hand. Um, with regard to the uh, Thomas Jefferson situation, the accommodation situation, so the national, uh, the college board, is an independent private corporation that's been around, I think, since the 1950s, which administers SAT. Uh, PSAT spent uh, past, I think it might also be AP as well, right? And uh, uh, the, uh, what we're talking about here is the PSAT test. Not the SAT test, the PSAT. That's what gets you in the running for the National Merit uh, Award. And students that do really well on their PSAT, uh, they do really well, they get either National Merit finalists or semifinalists status and then they can try to get to get one of those two after that. If they don't make it over that barrier, they go there's another group of them that are just below that to get a uh, for third place to get a, what's called commending status. Um, and I guess the National Merit Board notifies parents of that in their online dashboard you log into your kids account and look to see who gets commended status. And the commended status is different depending on which county you're in. The, the number of moves based on the relative place on some kids in your system. So, for example, my daughter got commended four years ago, but she'd been in 50 counties, she might have got semifinals, but because she was in Fairfax, she got commended. But anyway, I didn't find out my daughter was commended until four years later, about three weeks ago. Um, I was riding in the car with her, uh, talking to her about uh, the Attorney General's investigation, and my daughter said, Oh, I got commended. I had no idea. Uh, and I didn't call the Attorney General. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, first of all, uh, commended status is not, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously something you can put on your, your resume. Um, to my knowledge, most colleges care a lot more about your SAT score as opposed to what you got 
in your eighth grade PSAT test, you get, you got this third place status that they send that, that, that they send out a letter to the school about. Um, number one. So number two, parents can find it out on the dashboard, and if they don't log into the dashboard to see it, and feel like that's more the parents than it is on the school. Third, I would say that you know, one of the schools that's been flagged now is Western Comic High School, where I went. By the way, Paul, I went to meet school here too. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, you know, West Potomac has been doing their award ceremony in the winter pretty much at the same time for 10, 20 years now. Uh, and that's when they tell the students that it's not some like racial conspiracy to, or, you know, effort to try to, um, to you know, make people feel good or bad or whatever is when they get the awards out. Uh, there are now schools in Fairfax, Prince William, um, I just found out last night, you know, Stafford County has, you know, notifies on the same time frames. Uh, Chesterfield, I believe. And I suspect that we were to investigate, investigate every single school system in Virginia, you'd find high schools all across Virginia that provide this piece of paper, uh, you know, after the first college early application deadline, which is what everybody's complaining about. So, uh, I, I don't see this as a human rights violation. I don't see it as something we ought to be investigating. From my perspective, we really need to be focusing on learning loss that happened in the pandemic and getting guns out of the hands of six-year-olds that can't shoot their teachers. So, <laughs> that's that's kind of where I am on, on that investigation of that issue. I don't know where these guys are. And I don't support the governor's bill. I think it's micromanaging our school system, and I'm tired of them using our North Virginia schools as voting votes. Thank you. 